as one is important for presentation of financial statements. In this video, we are going to look specifically at liabilities and how they are presented either as non-current or current liabilities. Paragraph 69 tells us when liabilities are presented as current liabilities and then the other liabilities are non-current. Paragraph 69 reads as follows. Liabilities are current liabilities when we expect to settle in its normal operating cycle of the business or it's held primarily for trading or it's due to be settled within 12 months or the entity, entity does not have an unconditional right to defer settlement for at least 12 months after year end. And then all the other liabilities are non-current. But for this video, we are focusing on the specific rules that we find in paragraph 72 to 76. IS 10, you all know from first year. You need to know when something is an adjusting or a non-adjusting event. We have to know what the link is between IS1 and IS10. So when we decide how we present our liabilities, we need to go and look at the conditions that existed at year end. And thus we are going to integrate your IS10 knowledge with IS1. Paragraph 72 reads as follows. An entity classifies its financial liabilities as current when they are due to be settled within 12 months after the reporting period. This is the same as paragraph 69. Then this paragraph goes further and says, even if the original term was for a period longer than 12 months. So here I can explain it to you in terms of an example. So if you buy a building and you finance it with a loan, you need to pay back the loan, let's say within two years. So in the first year, it's for longer than 12 months, then it's a non-current liability. But in the second year, you have to pay it within 12 months. Therefore, it's a current liability then. Then this paragraph goes further and says it's still a current liability even if there's an agreement to refinance or to reschedule payments on a long-term basis and it's completed after the reporting period but before the financial statements are authorized for issue. So this refinancing, what they're talking about, it's basically you replace your old loan with a new one. But on year end, you still have the old loan terms. And therefore, this is the same as IS-10. You go and look at what is the conditions that exist at year end. Just as a summary for paragraph 72, is with refinancing and rescheduling of payments, you need to go and look what are the conditions that existed at year end. This is the same as your IS-10 knowledge that you already have. At year end, if you need to pay within 12 months, then it is a current liability. Then just as recap again, if you have to pay within 12 months, even if the original term was longer than 12 months, it's a current liability. It's also a current liability if you arrange after year end that you want to refinance this loan on a long term basis. Let us continue with our rules in IS-1. Paragraph 73 reads as follows. If an entity expects and has the discretion to refinance or roll over an obligation for at least 12 months after the reporting period under an existing loan facility, it classifies the obligation as non-current. So here we look at if the entity has the discretion and the entity expects to roll over the payment beyond 12 months after the reporting period, we classify it as non-current liability. Then this paragraph goes further and says, however, when refinancing or rolling over the obligation is not at the discretion of the entity, for example, there's no arrangement for refinancing, 
the entity entity does not consider the potential to refinance the obligation and classifies the obligation as current therefore if the entity has no discretion it remains a current liability when we have to pay it within 12 months just as a summary for paragraph 73 the question is does the entity have the discretion if so do they expect to roll over the payment beyond 12 months after reporting period so if it's a non we classify it as non-current when the entity has the discretion to refinance or roll over for at least 12 months after reporting period and they expect to do so it's a current liability if we as the entity has have no discretion to roll over this payment let us continue with paragraph 74 when an entity breaches a provision of a long-term loan arrangement on or before the year end of the reporting period with the effect that the liability becomes payable on demand it classifies the liability as current therefore at year end we have a liability we have to pay within 12 months because before the end of the year we breached these provisions and made the loan payable on demand then the paragraph goes further and says even if the lender agreed after the reporting period but before authorization of financial statements not to demand payment as consequence of the breach an entity classifies the liability as current because at the end of the reporting period it does not have an unconditional right to defer payment beyond 12 months after year end so we only agreed with the lender after year end that means that at year end the loan was still payable on demand and therefore it is a current liability let's compare paragraph 74 with paragraph 75 paragraph 75 says however an entity classifies the liability as non-current if the lender agreed by the end of the reporting period to provide a period of grace ending at least 12 months after the reporting period within which the entity can rectify the breach and during which the lender cannot demand immediate repayment so this happens by the end of the year because it says we agreed with the lender by the end of the reporting period okay paragraph 74 says when you agree with the lender after year end you classify it as a current liability paragraph 75 says if you agree with the lender by year end it's a non-current liability just as a summary for paragraph 74 and 75 if you breach a provision of a long-term loan go and look at when did you make the arrangement with the lender to extend these payments beyond 12 months after year end it is a current liability even if, if we agree with the lender after year end okay it is a non-current liability if we agree with the lender before or on reporting date to extend this loan beyond 12 months okay so this was all for video one then in video two we're going on with the next paragraph